with the Air Force to provide air security against, amongst other possible threats, a slow-moving Cessna. Stories have been circulating demonstrating the special training that these pilots are receiving to aid them when intercepting Cessnas or small aircraft. And that's a lot of media coverage for what is normally considered to be routine NORAD defense drills. For decades, the United States airspace has been under the North American Aerospace Defense Command, or NORAD's Air Defense Program, who have the task to defend our domestic skies with aircraft, which includes F-15 fighters. Then why make a story out of F-15 training exercises? Well, the reason is as simple as it gets. To put a spotlight on the mighty U.S. military and the domestic Air Force. For all those watching, the biggest game of the year to see. Infowars.com has time and time again exposed the fact that the DHS has very little interest in actually keeping anyone secure and a much larger agenda in acclimating the American population to live in a security state. What we'll be witnessing during the game will be nothing short of security theater broadcast during America's most popular sporting event. The DHS, as well as the U.S. military, has a history of paying big money to the NFL to propagandize the U.S. public. Countless articles report the relationship between the DOD and the NFL, including this November 2015 Pittsburgh Post-Gazette report. The DOD paid $53 million of taxpayers' money to pro sports for military tributes. So why does the DOD want to acclimate the public anyway? On Sunday, May 6, 2012, Infowars.com reported that a leaked U.S. Army document prepared for the Department of Defense contains shocking plans for political activists to be pacified by PSYOP officers into developing an appreciation of U.S. policies while detained in prison camps inside the United States. Last July, former General Wesley Clark went on MSNBC and called for disloyal Americans to be put in internment camps. Add this to the fact that Obama, who has chaired Security Council meetings, recently teamed up with the UN to create a global police force to deal with violent extremism. We as Americans are being pushed and shoved into a global system that is outside of the US Constitution and Bill of Rights. And the security state theater is one way the American public is primed for the occasion. As people become more used to seeing the military in their everyday life, the easier it will be for the U.S. to become acclimated into a global system. A system where dissenters get into a military van and are never heard of again. So for those of you who are ready to put your brain into relaxation mode and sink into the big game, your relaxed mind will be unconsciously experiencing a paranoid America who lives under the reckless and unaccountable police state. The DOD wants these security images and emotions to become a normal part of life as we see they are willing to pay big money to broadcast this reality during the Super Bowl. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the 
barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which one I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes and now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things and if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle and Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Dr. Group uh, called me last night and then, and then this morning, and he said, no, I, I mean, I have it. And, and nobody else has this. I can't believe it, that the Zika virus didn't come from Latin America. And this is already broken in the news. But what's new is that it came from the Rockefeller Foundation, they actually own it, Zika virus, ATCC registered VR-84TM. They got it registered, patented, and trademarked. 1948, it was, 1947, it was discovered, patented in 1952. Remember, I had the author of the U.S. and U.N. ratified biological weapons treaty, Dr. Francis Boyle, saying he's talked to his high-level genetic engineer associates, and they concur they've taken Zika and souped it up. It, it does seem to me and to others, uh, another expert friend of mine, that what we are dealing with here is some type of um, bio warfare agent that has been uh, genetically modified, GMO. Um, so for that reason, you really can't believe anything the WHO, the Pan American Health Organization, uh, the CDC um, is telling you. Uh, it also appears, as, as you correctly point out, that uh, Gates uh, was involved in this. Um, you know, Bill Engel has the book on Gates that he's he's basically a, a genocidalist. Um, he does have people uh, on his staff with experience uh, having done what I call death science, life scientists who do bio-warfare uh, work, um, it appears that um, 
the uh, U.S. Advanced Biowarfare Facility at Galveston uh, was involved. It also appears that the uh, 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 BSL-4 facility at Colorado State that works uh, with GMOing uh, mosquitoes was involved, and that um, uh, this uh, British high-tech firm, Oxitec, was involved. What is, what is uh, critical here is that uh, I believe it was the summer of 2004, a, uh, there was a scholarly paper published saying that these uh, genetically modified uh, mosquitoes could be dangerous if they were released. And despite this knowledge, they were released both in uh, Brazil and also in Colombia uh, deliberately and maliciously. Right now, I personally would not be traveling down to um, Latin America on, until we have some idea precisely what we are dealing with. And yet I note uh, on Monday, the WHO has convened uh, an emergency meeting where they're going to tell everyone, uh, well, just keep uh, business and travel as usual. Uh, I take it they got those instructions from the CDC. And we know full well the nefarious role that the CDC, the WHO, uh, played in the um, Black West African, uh, African Ebola uh, pandemic. You and I have already been through that. This uh, so-called Zika is also transmitted by uh, sexual intercourse, which I think proves that we have a uh, GMO uh, biowarfare agent at work here. And it is also uh, transmitted by saliva. And that indicates to me that we could be dealing with some type of uh, GMO um, gain of function biowarfare agent, namely that, that it could jump. So we're not sure exactly what's happening, but boy, it is suspicious. Here's a report from a year and a half ago that Jakari Jackson did getting into Bill and Melinda Gates and their production of genetically modified mosquitoes. Now, malaria is, of course, transmitted by mosquitoes. Uh, I brought some here just so you could uh, experience this. We'll let, let those roam around the uh, auditorium a little bit. There. There's no reason only poor people should have, have the experience. Uh, that was Bill Gates laughing about how he plans to use mosquitoes to force Medicaid against malaria. With horrible side effects accompanying voluntary vaccinations, I, for one, want to be in control of the needle, whether it comes from a pharmacist or a mosquito's face. In a world where taking too much cough syrup can send you to the hospital, can't taking too many vaccinations do the same thing? That's exactly what Nazi scientists were hoping for during World War II. They wanted to use mosquitoes as bioweapons to poison their opposition, a dream that was fulfilled when they switched out the mosquitoes for ticks on Plum Island. Years ago, the U.S. government brought Nazi mines to the states under Operation Paperclip to carry out various scientific functions. On Plum Island, Eric Traub experimented with ticks as bioweapons. In the 1970s, Lyme, Connecticut had an outbreak of what is now known as Lyme disease. There have been other strange occurrences that many speculate are related to the work done on Plum Island. So go ahead, opt out of vaccinating your child. Bill Gates and Eric Traub have the medicine. If I want to go to another clip of Bill Gates uh, where he's talking about equations at a TED Talk and showing what numbers have to be brought down to zero, and he points at humans being brought down to zero, and, and the crowd laughs. So you've got a thing on the left, CO2, that you want to get to zero. And that's going to be based on the number of people, the services each person's using on average, the energy on average for each service, and the CO2 being put out uh, per unit of energy. So let's look at each one of these and see how we can get this down to zero. Uh, probably one of these numbers is going to have to get pretty near to zero. Uh, that's back from high school algebra. But let's, let's take a look. Uh, first, we've got population. Now, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, healthcare, 
reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15%. This is an important wish, but it is one I think we can 